Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Talking Football Podcast. I'm absolutely delighted to say we're joined on the line this week by a former Leeds United Bolton Wanderers Derby star as well, Jeff Chandler. Jeff, thanks very much for, for coming on. You're welcome, Derek. Nice to be here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great to have you on, Jeff. Uh, look back at your, your time in the game. Um, look all the way back. You were born in Hammersmith, is that right, in, in 1959? Um, grown yeah. up? Growing up, were you always kicking the ball around? Um, not from the start, I wasn't. No, funnily enough, it was. Uh, it took me till about um, nine, till I was about nine, and started playing football at primary school. Prior to that, I was more into swimming. Wow. Um, which is strange, really, in London. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, yeah, I got into football when I was about nine, and really, that that just took over. Yeah, um, you were into swimming. Were you, were you pretty good at the swimming then, Jeff? Was we- you did quite well at it. Yeah, I was. I, I, I was quite good actually. I was not. I didn't swim far. I was always in the sprint, a freestyle sprint, yeah. and uh, I, I went for London trials and so you know. So uh, yeah, wow. I was quite good. Well, fantastic. So you started playing football then, and and did you have any role models, any players that you you looked up to and you aspired to be like? Yeah, I mean, I um, I used to. I lived not far from QPR's ground. Yeah, uh, and I used to go down there from sort of being, you know, nine, ten. Uh, from the early days, you had your Rodney Marshes playing, you know, and Barry Bridges, the Morgan Twins, and people like that. Yeah. And then shortly after, you got into the seventies when you, you had uh, Jerry Francis and Stan Bowles, um, you know, Ian Gillard, Dave Clement, great, great players. You know, Terry Venables came. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, like, I used to love. I used to go to every game. Yeah, fantastic. It, it, the move to Blackpool then, were, were you, you were spotted playing, were you playing for a boys club or, or your school then that, that, that a, a scout get sent down to have a look at you? Well, yeah. It, um, funny that, that uh, at the time I was, I was about 13, 14 and I was training at QPR um, under 14s yeah. and played, I used to play for them uh, on a Saturday, you know, in, in, in the mm-hmm. A team sort of thing. And my, my school teacher, PE teacher, was David Johnson, who was the son of Harry Johnson, the Blackpool FA yeah. Cup captain. Yeah. Um, and David, uh, we played, you know, played for the school team as well. Dave was our manager. And David asked two of the lads in the school team to go up to Blackpool for a trial. So I went to, because I was a bit cocky in them days, and uh, <laughs> I went and knocked on his door and sort of said, you know, why are they going up to Blackpool for a trial? I'm better than them. Why am I not going? And he, and he sort of said, well, you're training at QPR. And I said, yeah, but I haven't signed any schoolboy forms as yet. I can't sign till I'm 14. Yeah. Um, and I think I should be going, you know. So he, he contacted the chief scout at Blackpool at the time, which was Jackie Wright, and said, have you got any more places available? I've got a, a lad who's not bad, actually, and he should have been coming, but I thought he was at QPR. So that, that's how it started. And, I came up on trial to Blackpool. Um, that would have been about 1973. Yeah. And uh, they signed me straight away on schoolboy forms. Um, and, you know, when we, we came back, they didn't sign my two mates who went went up there with me. Yeah. And it's just fate, you know, that that's just how life goes sometimes, isn't it? You yeah. know, I, I, I went and knocked on his door. I never hadn't have done that. Who knows where I've been? Yeah, that's strange, isn't it? And it, I mean, moving up to Blackpool, being a being a London boy, um, what, I guess it was a, a bit different from what you're used to up there. Yeah, it, it was hard actually. Um, being a you know long way from home, and and I was the only southerner there. So as you can imagine, <laughs> with the accent I had at the time, um, I got a bit of stick from the lads because I was also I want a bad player, and I yeah. was a bit cocky. <laughs> <laughs> so. I don't think they took too kindly to me at first, um, but in fairness, we were all in digs together as apprentices, you know, and we, we, we got to make friends very quickly and we used to have a great laugh. And, he, and we, we, we had a good manager at the time in Harry Potts. Yeah. And I used to get homesick quite a lot. Um, and I used to go and see him, you know, and he used to give me a train ticket every week to go home after the uh, A-team game. Wow. 
and come back, go home on a Saturday, come back on a Sunday. So yeah. I spent a lot of time traveling, but if he hadn't have done that, I might, you know, I might have walked away because I was really homesick. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned you're obviously been a, an apprentice up there, Jeff. Did you do all the apprentice sort of stuff, cleaning boots, cleaning stands, that sort of stuff? Yeah. Um, <laughs> we did all that, the washing, the kit and, you know, the sort of gophers really. Yeah. But um, again, I think <laughs> I was a cheeky little bugger. And, uh, <laughs> I, I went to... Uh, Alan Brown came in as manager after my first year as being an apprentice. Uh, he replaced Harry Potts. And after he'd been there two weeks, uh, I went to see him, knocked on his door and said, I don't like this apprenticeship, all these jobs, Gaffer. I said, I don't think I should be doing them. I need to be signing professional. So <laughs> he sent me away. Um, but a week later, he called me back in and he said, uh, yeah, he said, yeah, we, we wanna, we're going to sign you. So I signed a two-year contract as a professional at 17, yeah, wow. which got me out of doing all the jobs. <laughs> but, but what I hadn't thought about was when you were an apprentice, they paid all your digs for you. And, you know, you got your wages were your own to spend. Yeah. What I didn't realise was they only put me on about 30 quid a week and 15 of it was me digs. I was worse <laughs> off. <laughs> but I used to get home. I used to get home a bit earlier every day. <laughs> <laughs> Sells you right, doesn't it? Um, yeah. when you made it when you made it into the first team then can you remember um making your debut I was I was reading was it against Blackburn you made your debut there yeah yeah my first game I think it was about September 77 I think it might have yeah. been um Blackburn away at Ewood Park yeah. local derby um yeah I was very nervous uh mm. because I've been spouting to the manager I should be in the team <laughs> I should be in the team and then he put me in <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I was very nervous and uh, fortunately I scored on my debut uh, yeah. and we won 2-1. So um, Oops. I, I played OK, you know, I, I held my own really. Um, I was very slight. I was small and I was very slight. I was only 17, 18, you know, and, yeah. and I wasn't very big, uh, but I could play. Um, but I came on stuck quite quick because the week after we played Tottenham, and uh, then you're dealing with people like Glenn Oddle and people like oh. that, you know, couldn't get near him. Um, yeah. So we lost that game 2 0. And I think I was left out after that for a, a month or two. The manager thought he'd give me a taste and then pulled me out, which was the right decision, really. You know, yeah. it's a big step up. And, uh, you know, you've got to take your time. Well, no, I didn't think so. I thought I should have been playing every week. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, yeah, it was good. I remember the Blackburn game like it was yesterday. I think Mickey Walsh scored the other goal and uh, I got the winner, I think. Did, did your family make it to the game at all? Did, did, were they able to take in the game? Fortunate, fortunately, yeah. Um, my mum and dad came up for the game and came yeah. to it. Um, and it was fortunate because... My, my dad unfortunately died at uh, he was only 48 when he died yeah so he only saw really that that game and maybe one other of me playing yeah um, um, which was quite sad really but yeah they, they managed they got up for they got up for my debut that's good see as a, see as a young boy Jeff um you were quite bullish as you said but was that was it older ex the, the sort of more experienced pros were they hard on on the young boys or did they help you oh yeah. Well, they, they helped you because, you know, um, they, they were good like that, you know, yeah. passing on experience and giving you advice and stuff. Yeah. And I think uh, I got smacked around the head quite a few times when, particularly when I was an apprentice, you know, and you were getting told to go, by the older pros to go and get me, me, <laughs> me track suit and go and I'd use this turn around and say, you go and get your track, you know, and I get a smack around the Terry Oldcock, an old pro there, he's still... He still goes to games when you can now, you know. Yeah. And we laugh about it. He used to have a sovereign on his middle finger and he'd turn it around and smack me right round the head because I was his apprentice. Um, but no, they were they were good old pros, you know, and, and there's got to be respect and there's got to be discipline and that's what they were knocking into me. Uh, yeah, absolutely. They, 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 were, they, were, they were good. There were some good people about in those days. You know, your Bill Bentleys and Alan Suddick, yeah. uh, you know, John Curtis, Steve Arrow, who, who all had good careers, you know. And they yeah. had it because they they were good pros. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you did quite well, well there, and then the, uh, Leeds United, of course, come calling 
Um, did you have did you have many clubs look, looking at you at that point, Jeff? Were, were they all sort of sniffing about? I don't know to be honest, because back in those days, you know, what they want the social media and everything like there is now, yeah. and uh, I think particularly as players, um, I think freedom of contract hadn't even come in. You know, a club owned you basically, yeah. Yeah. even when your contract had finished. So you only found out what they wanted you to find out. Yeah. Unless someone in the paper, like I remember the, the Sunday, the Sunday people that Norman Wynn used to write, you know, and he used to be like the gossip columnist for the football, yeah. you know, so and so is looking at this player, that player. Um, but I did, I, I did get to know that Leeds were were watching me because um, Stan Turnan had taken over from Bob Stoko. Yeah. And uh, Stan had previously worked with Jimmy Adamson at Leeds and Dave Merrington and, and, and the staff over there, uh, they, they had the, the, the connection was the Burnley background for them all, you know. Yeah. And um, I was going to play for the under-21s in Dublin, Ireland. Uh, I'd been called up for the under-21s because Stan had let them know that I, my mum was Irish. Yeah. So, so they called me up for a game and, and the day before I was going, Stan called me in and he said, look, my contract was up at Blackpool. I hadn't signed a new contract. And he said, look, Leeds are watching you Wednesday night when you play in Ireland. And they're really interested in signing, signing you. So if you, if you want to go there, you got to go out and play. Yeah. So uh, I, I, as I went out and had a great game. And, yeah. <laughs> and as I left the ground after the game, um, Dave Blakely, which was the Leeds chief scout, called me and he sort of said, you know, uh, we want to sign you. Would you be interested? I said, of course I would. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, it, and it's funny how it happened because obviously they'd spoken to Blackpool as well to let them know, you know, and, and yeah. he just said, be at Ellen Road on Friday. And this was on the Wednesday night. So Friday, I went over to Ellen Road and I went in with Jimmy Adamson and sat down. He told me how much I was getting paid. No agents in them days, you know, I was yeah. like... A young Speaking lad and hadn't had any dealings of stuff like that, but uh, they looked after me and and yeah, I signed that day. Yeah, magic. You, you said there, um, uh, Jeff, you were called up to the uh, the Republic of Ireland. Um, we, we, I guess you must have been proud to, to represent Ireland. What what, what was that experience? Well, I, it, it was you know it was fantastic. You know, I I, I knew obviously I knew my mum was Irish and I and I never really said anything to anybody because it, I was a young boy and I didn't I wasn't thinking about international football at that stage. I was thinking about staying in Blackpool's team and doing as as well as I could. Um, and it was only in a conversation with Stan that I happened to say, you know, because he turned around to me and said, "You need to be looking ahead. You want to play for England?" I said, "No, I want to yeah. play for Ireland. My mum's Irish." Yeah. And Stan contacted him and let them know, you know. But uh, yeah, the uh, first game was for the under twenty ones at Tolka Park, um, and it was great. You know, I mean, I, I should have played for Ireland a lot more. Really, I only got one full, uh, two yeah. full caps, and that one under twenty one. Yeah. But um, you know, circumstances, how you behave, and stuff has an effect on your career, doesn't it? Yeah. You know. What well, What were the boys like? Did they uh, treat treat you well as, as if they're one of their own? Obviously, coming from oh from yeah, where you were, yeah, yeah, because. As, as you well know, in those days, and it was a Johnny Giles era of him being manager, yeah. um, they were they were looking out and trying to find as many players as they could because in those days, Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, didn't have a team, you know, going to World Cups or European Championships yeah. or challenging for stuff like that. And uh, people like Mickey Walsh, who, who played at Blackpool with me and then went on to Everton. Yeah. Mick played for the Republic. A lot of the lads in and around the squad, worn, actually born in Ireland, a lot of it was that they had, you know, parentage or grandparents who, who were from Ireland and that enabled them to, you know, to be able to play. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, we, we were accepted by the fans, you know, by the, by the Irish lads. Yeah, there was no animosity because we were born in England. Yeah, fantastic. So you joined Leeds then. I mean, walking there, is that, you'd have been 20 then, Jeff, wouldn't you, when you joined Leeds United? I mean, a massive, massive club, isn't it? What was it like walking into Ellen Road for the first time? Wow. Uh, well, the, the, like I said, I, I met Jimmy Adamson on the Friday and signed. And he said, right, be here tomorrow at one o'clock um, to meet the players. 
you know, yeah. we were they were playing Liverpool at home that day. Uh, so I went and bought a new suit, you know, <laughs> <laughs> as bright as I could. <laughs> and uh, yeah, went went to Ellen Road and, you know, it, it was unbelievable. The, the atmosphere around the ground, you know, and going in to meet, walked into the dressing room to meet the players and you sort of looking around the dressing room. And at that stage, you still had people like, you know, Paul Madeley there, Trevor Cherry, yeah. you had Dave Harvey, you had Eddie Gray, you know, Brian Flynn, Paul Hart, who I played with at Leeds, yeah. um, some great, great names that, that, that I'd watched as a kid, you yeah. know, growing up. Um, I'd only been running around the pitch at Loftus Road at QPR's ground when Leeds won the championship in 74. The last game of the season for him was at QPR. And I, ran, I was running around the pitch with Billy Bremner and all them <laughs> celebrating. I was a QPR fan. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it, it, it was unreal. It, it, looking back, it, it was it was hard to take in what yeah. was happening. Really, you know. Yeah. It's funny it you, you mentioned you mentioned their uh, suits, uh, uh, Jeff. I was speaking to I told uh, Keith Harris at the Bolton FM that I was going to interview you, and he said, "Ask him about suits." So he, he says there seems to be a story a story with yourself in, in suits. Well, I mean, I, I don't know what one he's alluding to, but I mean. I love my clothes, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, when I went over to Leeds that day, I went out and bought a suit on the Friday after I'd signed for them. And uh, I looked for the, the like the flashiest one I could find. I'm being from London as well. <laughs> you know, I, I wasn't quiet in whatever I did, which didn't always go down well with managers, I have to say. <laughs> um, I've had a, a few tellings off, off people like Bob Stoko and Arthur Cox for sort of what I was wearing, you know, oh, really? which is, is, is very strange really, because yeah. and yeah, I think, I think Bob Stoko wanted to throw me off the coach because I had red kickers on <laughs> with my suit and he, he couldn't understand it because he was a, you know, Northeast fella, like, you know, proper <laughs> workman like, and there's me sat there in sunglasses and red kickers on the coach. And he's saying to me, what on earth are they? And I said, it's all right, Gaffer, I'm not playing in them. You know, and he didn't like that either. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, I mean, I, I, I've always liked, you know, the old suits and stuff yeah. like that. And it, it's not, I don't think it was to, to, to be cocky. It, it was just in London, the, the, the fashion thing in London w was different. When I came to Blackpool's and Apprentice, like you were just saying, yeah. I was wearing sort of drain pipes and Johnny Rotten stuff. Whereas up here, they were wearing flares. <laughs> and I was the odd one out, which was strange. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I liked all that. So they, Mickey Walsh used to call me Johnny Rotten at Blackpool. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, you mentioned uh, Jimmy Adams, Adamson, of course, at, at Leeds at the time. What, what was he like as a, as a manager, Jeff? Um, well, looking back, um, I would. It, it was quite a... A quiet man, Jimmy. Yeah. He, he, he didn't, uh, he, he never raised his voice very much. You know, it was strange because I think he'd been in the game a long time and, yeah. and I think he let his staff do more of the talking than he did. You know, Dave Merrington, who was his first team coach, Dave could have a go, you know, and get you by the scruff of the neck if he wanted to and stuff yeah. like that. But, but Jimmy, he was always good. He was good with me because I think, he bought me and uh, when he signed me, he said, look, I'm not signing you for this season. I'm signing you for the future. You're a young lad. Yeah. Don't expect to play. Um, just feel your way around the club. It's a big club, you know, big step up for you. Um, but we'll, we'll give you a chance if and when you deserve it. And yeah. I'd only been there two weeks, I think, and I was sub for the first team. <laughs> and I think along my career, this is how things sort of went, that I got stuff a lot earlier than maybe I sh not should have done, but yeah, to appreciate mean. it, yeah. to appreciate it. Yeah. And, 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 I mean, you mentioned the, I mean, e high, big expectation at Leeds United, of course, and playing at Ellen Road. What, what was that like as, as, as a player walking out there and, and playing there? Well, uh, I mean, the, the atmosphere at Ellen Road is intimidating, you know, for people going there. Um, but, but to play for them, I mean, yeah. those those fans, like most football club fans, Bolton included, you know, yeah. everywhere you go, the fans are passionate about their own club. 
um, and Leeds have got a reputation, their fans, as being very passionate. And, but when you're playing for them, and particularly when you're doing well, it's fantastic. Yeah. Unfortunately, during the period I was at Leeds, it was a transitional period yeah. where, you know, players like Tony Curry had just left, John Hawley and stuff like that, you know, and they brought players in like myself, say, and uh, Wayne Entwistle then came. And I don't think the fans could could accept the level of player they were getting rid of. Yeah. And not so much, it was more potential Jimmy Adamson was bringing in, whereas experienced players who had performed at that level for years had left. Yeah. So it was quite a transitional period, uh, very up and down. But I think the first season I was there, I think we finished about 10th, you know, in the first yeah. division. At the all, yeah. um, which wasn't bad. And I, towards the end of the season, I think... I played about 17 or 18 games that first season, you know, when he said I wasn't expected to play. And he, he played me for the last nine or 10 games of the season to give me a run to see how I performed. And I think I did quite well, you know, but things yeah. changed. Jimmy got the sack at the beginning of the next season. Unfortunately for me, um, the manager who came in, I didn't see eye to eye with at all. And it wasn't something this time that I had done. You know, it, yeah. it was just the way he was you know, I'm talking about Alan Clark, who I admired so much, you know, as a, as a footballer. And I thought he would be good for me being a young manager. He was only 34 coming from Barnsley as their manager. And I thought it would be really good because he'd like young players. He'd want to bring them on. But, but unfortunately, he, he was quite an arrogant man. Yeah. And um he had a meeting when he first came into the club with all the players and sort of give the message that I don't care what your name is. You don't get in the team because your name's Eddie Gray or I know you, yeah. to use Eddie as an example, you get in on merit. So when I got in the team, I got injured. I'd been, I was in the team when he arrived, but I got injured on a Friday before Man United game. So I was out and I missed six weeks. So um, after six weeks of no training, Arthur Graham got injured. I just started training on the Monday and he said to me, you're playing tomorrow night at Nottingham Forest away, which I was delighted about because I thought, well, he's thrown me straight back in. But I hadn't trained for six weeks and Forest were like, they just won the European Cup, I think, for the second time. <laughs> so, you know, you're going somewhere which is quite uh, going to be, a, yeah. And I played all right, you know, but next game he left me out because Arthur Graham was fit again. So I just, I went to see him and get knocked on the manager's door. Yeah. And I just said to him, you know, when you came, you said, if you get in the team and you do well, you stay in. Obviously, I've not stayed in. Mm. What did I do? That, you know, I need to work on. What? What is it you left me out? Why? Yeah. And he just sort of said, until you've done what I've done in the game, don't knock on my door, turn around and F off. No so, so um, that that was my first sort of encounter with him yeah. as as a and, and and in fairness, I was going in there looking for help. No, yeah. I, I wasn't going in for an argument because he'd left me out because yeah. I expected Arthur Graham to come back in. But yeah, that. he was he, he was quite arrogant, and from that day, really, I don't think we spoke very much, you know, because uh, I used to travel over. To Leeds from uh, from Blackpool, yeah. and I used to pick up Brian Flynn and Brian Greenoff on the way. And when we arrived at the ground, Alan Clark would be in the corridor, and he'd say, "Morning, Brian. Morning, Brian," and ignore me completely. No so I started going, "Morning, Jeff." You know, like being <laughs> sarcastic. So we didn't get on that well, you know. Um, <laughs> and it wasn't the fact that I wasn't playing; I was playing really well in the reserves. I was training hard, you know. Yeah. It's just something that happened. And, I, I, you know, it happens in football. I still think he was a great player. Yeah. As a manager for me, no. But for other people, yes, you know, and that's life. He did He did similar with Alex Sabella, you know. Yeah. He didn't like Alex. Yeah. Too skillful. He, he wanted someone grafting and because Alex was a great player. Yeah. yeah. But he hardly played. He, I think Alex played about the same amount of games as me. Yeah. You know, and he was a good player. Yeah, I think I, I spoke to. I think it was Gary Hampson that was at Leeds at the time as well. He said similar yeah. about Alan as well. He said he didn't. He, he wasn't his cup of tea either. Um, well, just say similar he, to what you said. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Gary joined similar time to me, I think a month or so before I did. Um, yeah. And Alan, Alan, Alan upset quite a few people. You know, I was good friends with Paul Maidley. He looked after yeah. me a little bit when I went there. And, and you know, he, he treated Paul bad. Yeah. You know, he treated Brian Flynn. And that, that, in effect, is why they got relegated the next season. Yeah. Because he, he'd upset too many. Yeah. And he'd upset the older pros, you know, and and I'm not saying that they're perform- they, they they didn't try it because obviously they did. They were good pros. Yeah. But when the manager's against too many people and treating them like that, you know, you're not you're not going to get everything out of them. You, yeah. It's got to be a team effort and all behind each other and giving 100 percent and all that. When you've got a manager picking in, you might not be in the next game and you can't talk to him. Nah. It's difficult. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, you mentioned Eddie Gray, Jeff. What, what was he like as a player? Uh, well, I still talk to Eddie now. Yeah, um, top man, isn't he? And uh, I have to say, he's probably the nicest man I've met in football. Yeah. You know, he, he, he was really good with me at Leeds as well. Um, you know, and he liked me as a player. Um, and whenever I've seen him since then, and we're talking a long time ago, you know, we're talking 40 years ago. <laughs> it's like you, you're his best friend when you see him, you know, he talks to you, comes over, how are you doing? You know, and we tell, I'll text him and a week or two back, it was his birthday. Um, great player. What a great player. Yeah. He, I didn't realise, even though I used to, you know, watch him on the telly and saw him live a couple of times at QPR. I didn't realise how strong he was on the ball, how he protected the ball. You know, great, great player. Great player. A uh, lot of injuries, unfortunately. Um, yeah. And I just wish, looking back, and I've said it too, Eddie, you know, I, I know he managed Leeds uh, after Alan Clark and Billy had been there. And, that, and I said to him, I wish I'd have played for you, you know, because yeah. he was someone you felt you could talk to yeah. about football and he'd help you. He, he, he wasn't one for send, you know, who I am or anything. It was, he would help you, you know, yeah. um, but that's life. You know, it, it was a pleasure. He, he was and is a lovely man. Yeah. See, when you went away from home and of course the, the Leeds fans are, are, are um, unlike uh, most, I mean, passionate support. What was that like to play for them when you went, when you traveled away to places? Well, my, my debut for Leeds um, was down at Southampton. Yeah, uh, and again, that, that, you know, I'd I'd only been there a couple two months, maybe two months, you know, to eight ten weeks, and uh, the manager Jimmy, I'd played, I come on a, in a couple of games, as uh, a sub, and he gave me my debut away at Southampton, and uh, we got there, and the, the away end was absolutely chocker, you know, <laughs> and that's a long way. We flew, we flew down actually. We, and I was thinking, like, I'm in heaven here, like, you know, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be back home in Blackport at ten o'clock, watch it on match of the day, um, <laughs> uh, which I did. It was funny, I did that. But uh, yeah, the, the, the support, and I've, I've still, it was on match of the day, and I've still got the tape of it. You know, yeah, uh, we won two, one. Alan Curtis scored goal of the season in the game. Yeah, uh, I made, I made the first goal for Wayne Entwistle, and it was a good game actually. But the fans were fantastic. You know, I mean, they, they just. So fanatical, you know, and, and when they say Leeds till I die, I think they mean it. Yeah, <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah it was a great experience playing in front of them. Great experience. You mentioned earlier um, when you're at Blackpool, coming up against Alexa Hoddle and what have you. Was there any players that you faced, uh, Jeff, that, that gave you a right, a right good game? Well, there was plenty because, you know, you, looking back, I weren't a bad player, but, yeah. but you know, th- th- there's players that, you know, or a step above you, you know, and, and, and it, I played, I remember playing uh, against Tottenham a few times when I was at Blackpool and at Leeds. Uh, and after, I think it was after the 82, was it 82, 78 World Cup, mm. we were lining up against Tottenham at White Hart Lane and the midfield was our dealers, Ricky Villa and Glenn Oddle. <laughs> and it's like, you know, oh dear, we're in trouble. <laughs> In fairness, we only lost 2-1 and they scored in the last minute. Yeah, um, That was one of the two goals I scored for Leeds at White Hart Lane. But, yeah. uh, I mean, Glenn Oddle, Glenn Oddle was a great player. And, yeah. and unfortunately, I think the era that he grew up in as a player, the same as your likes of Alan, Alan Hudson, you know, they weren't picked for England. And, and yeah. 
any other, if it had been from France, Spain, or any, they'd have, they'd have had hundreds and hundreds of caps yeah. because they were absolute class. So everyone used to go on about Glenn Huddle doesn't tackle, he doesn't run back, he doesn't do this. Well, Glenn Huddle was a great player. Yeah. He, he had two good feet. You know, Alan Hudson, the same. It, it, there were so many of those players, Stan Bowles, you know, Rodney Marshes, yeah. your Frank Worthingtons, nice. that never got what they deserved, but they were great players, you know. Yeah. Absolute class, yeah. So the, the move to Bolton comes around in, in 81. How did all that, that come about, Jeff? Well, like I say, Alan Clark was manager at Leeds. Uh, my contract was uh, was up at Leeds. Yeah. And I'd been to see him. He hadn't offered me a new contract, but they still held your registration. So I played in the reserves. I was, you know, I played in the reserves. And funnily enough, the Leeds, Leeds reserves were playing at Blackpool. And I was playing in that game and someone called me and said, uh, Bolton are watching you tomorrow, you know? So I knew they were watching. And I think it was Charlie Wright. The, the, he was a coach at Blackpool and he, at the time he was doing the youth team, but at scouting for him as well. And it, it was Charlie who came to watch us at Blackpool. And uh, I knew I had no future at Leeds because whatever I did in the reserves and I was playing well, you know, I mean... Yeah. It, being honest, the reserve team level w- wasn't enough for me, you know, because yeah. it was, I found it easy and it wasn't stretching me or anything. Yeah. And I knew I had to go because I wasn't going to play while he was there. Um, so Bolton offered money for me. Uh, I think it went, I can't remember. I think it might've went to a tribunal. I'm not sure. Um, and George Muddle signed me for Bolton. And uh, George was great with me. He was a, old Sunderland winger. So, you know, he liked wingers and stuff like that. And it was, it was George Muller who actually first put me on the wing. Cause I, I wasn't a winger when I was at Leeds, <laughs> I was a midfield player. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I came to Bolton and I, I had a great time there. You know, I mean, I, obviously I've been there twice and it was fantastic. Lovely club, homely club, you know, you knew everybody in the offices yeah. Your Alf Davis's all the commercial team, you know, used to have a laugh. The groundsman, it, it was it was a real real good place to play. Yeah, it was a, a tough. Was it the first season that the club get relegated when when you were there? It was a, a tough season. On no, the club, wasn't it? no, we stayed the first. I joined. I think it was in the October eighty one. I joined. Yeah, um, and we stayed up that season. I think we played. It might have been Sheffield United last game of the season. We had to win to make sure we stayed up, and we beat them three one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we stayed up that season. And unfortunately, you know, you, you had players in the team in that first season. Your Len Cantellos were there. You know, Peter Reid was there. Yeah. Neil Watmore. A lot of good pros. But the club were in trouble, I think, financially as well. Mm-hmm. And Reedy got sold. Reedy went to Everton. You know, Len went. Uh, John McGovern came in as manager the next season and had to sort of cut his cloth accordingly and, and a lot of the, um, the the experience pros left. Yeah. And, and funnily enough, in John's book, I've read John McGovern's book and he does say in it, his hands were tied as far as what he could do buying players. So he had to get rid of players. And he, he said, you know, the only experience one or who had relative experience was myself who he kept. Yeah. A lot of the, the lads who came in were free transfers, decent players, but he couldn't go out and spend a lot of money, you know. So it was a quite a transitional period uh, yeah. for the club, and we got we did get relegated that that season. Yeah, and so, I mean, when you left Leeds, and you must have been disappointed at the time, but you must have been pleased to start. I mean, playing regular football again, Jeff. Uh, that's I mean, at that age, you just want to play every week, aren't you? Yeah, and, and that's exactly it. You know, I I wasn't prepared to sit at Leeds and and you know sit in the reserves because running out to an empty stadium ain't any good for anybody and no. you can only do that for so long and I had to I had to go I was gutted about going because I knew what a big club it was and I wanted to play there yeah. but when you know and it happens to every you know lots of players have it unfortunately sometimes you you don't get on with a manager you know yeah. um, and that's football but. I was quite happy, like you say, to go to Bolton. Obviously, I knew I had to play well to stay in the team and, yeah. and, and be picked. But I knew I was capable of doing that. So uh, it was a great opportunity for me. And that's how I looked at it. 
as an opportunity to get me me feet back in the team and play in front of a crowd, you know, and perform. Yeah, you mentioned John McGovern. I guess it, is it is a sort of complete opposite to what what, what Alan Clark was. Was it much better to play under? Yeah, it's, it's funny actually because you thought of John McGovern um, knowing Clough and stuff like that, yeah. and, and my my expectation of John was him being quite dour and hard to talk yeah. to and not get on with. When in actual fact, it was the opposite. He was, for me, as a manager, he he was probably the best one I had. Well, he was the best one I had because he treated me like an adult. He knew I liked to have a drink. He knew I liked to have a fag. And he didn't ridicule me for it. Yeah. All he used to say was, listen, football's you live in. You go out on the pitch. You make sure you perform and you play. You never get left out of the team. If you give me 100%, you go out and play, you're in. Make sure you look after yourself. Have a drink, by all means. Have a cigarette. And I used to go back to his house after games, away games. We'd go back to his house and sit and have a drink and a fag, because he had the odd fag. Yeah. And, and we'd have a chat about the game, you know, football. And what it did for me, it took away any nerves or any fear that you have as a footballer when you're playing for a manager who doesn't trust you or you think doesn't trust you, you know, you're going out playing thinking, if I have a bad game, I'm out of the team. Whereas with John, I, I didn't need to think like that. He said, he said to me, you know, you're the best player at the club. As long as you go out and give it yeah. what you've got, some days won't go right for you. But as long as you try and you go out and give it, you'll be in the team. Yeah. So that relaxed me. And in fairness, the two seasons I had with him, um, I scored 37 goals, yeah. you know, 21 seasons, 17, I thought, 16 a year, year before. It was great. And I loved it under him, you know, and I still talk to him now, you know, I still give him a ring now and again. And we have a chat and yeah, real good man. He's done a lot for Bolton, the, the, the fans at the time, because again, we were going through a transitional period. A lot of the fans didn't know what was going on behind the scenes. The club nearly got went bankrupt. Yeah. You know, John, John paid for us to go on a pre-season tour to the Isle of Man. Yeah. He did oh. marathons to raise the money. That's you know, real, so... I mean, as a player at that point, were you, were you worried about anything, Jeff, at, at that point with the, with the club, um, about how, how difficult it was behind the scenes? Or was that something... Did you just concentrate on the park? Yeah. I mean, in fairness to the club they kept that away from us. You know, yeah. they had a great commercial team at the time with Alf Davis yeah. uh, leading it. And they had obviously Nat, Nat Lofthouse, yeah. who, and they, they, they did the lifeline, which kept that club afloat yeah. um, with the fans and everything. And it was fantastic. They, they never mentioned in a dressing room, look, this club could go under. No one ever talked about it. So from that perspective, it was only after that I learned how bad it was you know, us as players, in, you know, players, we, our heads are in the air, aren't we? we? We don't know what's going on after time. You know, as long as you're getting your boots on and you're running out and getting paid, then, then you know, it, it, the world's about you, basically. And then to some extent, you've got to be a bit focused like that. But you don't appreciate what's going on around you as much. And in particular, the one thing I've really appreciated in the last few years is the fans, and, and what's brought it more to the fore is that there's no fans watching football now. You know, the stadiums are empty. There's no atmosphere. And that shows you that the fans make football. Without the fans, football's nothing. You're right. You know, right, and yeah. I'm a member now, you know, with the Bolton Wanderers Remembrance Group, you know, I'm an ambassador for that. And those guys are fantastic. What They, they you know, they love that club so much. Yeah. And I don't think as players you really appreciate fans being like that when you were playing, you know. Yeah, then Bondon Park, how much did you enjoy playing there? The pitch wasn't always brilliant, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> in fairness, I, li I liked it because because of the slope on the pitch, you know, on the edges, Yeah, you felt like you were up on a stage, Yeah, you know, playing. And I liked that. It was yeah. re I, I really did like that. But um, it was a good old ground, a good proper football ground you know the dressing room was massive and I you know when I think back it, it was it was a privilege you know to, to go out and play at any football ground as a professional yeah. but you you know I liked some some grounds suit you better than others I think 
yeah. I don't know what it is. You know, you, you go out and you feel at home and, and you, the, the, the picture you see on that pitch is easy. Whereas yeah. sometimes on other pitches, it sounds strange, maybe a bit tighter or whatever. You don't see the same picture, but I, I love playing at Burnden. But, you know, once you got to sort of Christmas in January when the rain started and the pitch got heavy, it was tough. Yeah. But good ground. Was there any places you didn't like going to? Millwall. Uh, <laughs> funny you should say that. I've had, well, Gary, I had Gary Henshaw on a couple of weeks ago. He said that. I've had Anton Rogan on. He said it. And, and Margaro Gomez, who played for Birmingham, he says it was the worst place. They always say oh, Millwall. <laughs> I tell you, I mean, <laughs> it's funny. What, what, their fans, the, the home fans, used to stand near the halfway line, all on the side, rather than behind one of the goals or whatever. Yeah. And they, you know, and I was playing obviously left wing, and the abuse that I got was unbelievable. And I mean, you're only like ten foot from them, yeah. And they were throwing abuse at me and calling me a northern this and a northern. And I turned around, I said, "Do you realise I'm from London?" <laughs> <laughs> and they all started laughing like, <laughs> but oh, they, they were fierce. They were yeah. fierce, like you know. And they they just did not like anyone other than Millwall. They didn't yeah. appreciate good football, other than even <laughs> Millwall playing it. And it, it was a hard place to go to. And uh, one season, the coach broke down going to the game. And we were a few streets away from um, the den. Yeah. And we had to walk oh, through God. the streets with the, with the kit bags, you know, frightened to death, honestly. They didn't, they weren't bothered that you were the team that they were playing. Like they yeah. were threatening us and everything. It was frightening. Oh, yeah. mad lot. Cold Blow Lane, I think they called it as well, didn't they? Yeah. The Den, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a nice place to go. So um, if you, you'd leave Bolton for the first time then, Jeff, in uh, 85 to join Derby. How did it, the move come about? Were you sad to leave Bolton at that point? I was, yeah. I mean, you know, lots of lots of things go on and stories get said. And I, what, what basically what happened was, the last two seasons I'd had at Bolton, I'd like I say, I'd scored 17 goals one season, 20 the next. My contract was up. Yeah. And obviously I thought I'd done well and I wanted a better contract. I know the club were financially struggling, but the offer they made me was, you know, it wasn't good at all. Yeah. And I went off on holiday in the summer um, and it was... While I was on holiday, I think Derby had tried to contact me at home and the mother-in-law had picked the phone up. She was looking after the kids while me and the missus went away for a week. Um, <laughs> and she just, you know, we phoned home one night to say, yeah, the kids are all right. Yeah, yeah. And she said, oh, some, some fella's been on the phone. Roy McFarland. <laughs> and I went, what? <laughs> anyway, I phoned him when I got home and, and again... I ended up leaving and going to Derby. They it went to Tribunal. I think the fee was forty grand in the end, which I don't know how on earth the, the, the Tribunal came to forty grand when you've scored 36, 37 yeah. goals in two seasons as a winger. Yeah. But Derby nicked me. To be fair, Bolton should have got a lot more money for, than, than that. Yeah. But no, yeah, I went to Derby and um, I had a great a great start there. But you know. We had a manager there who, and I love Arthur Cox, you know, he, he was a proper sergeant major. Yeah. But again, he was one of them that uh, loved me, but also loved to berate me, you know. And I mean, he used to give me stick for passing the ball to our team. <laughs> I, I, honestly, it's funny. I was, I was looking through some old uh, pictures this week because uh, the Remembrance Group asked me to send them some stuff over. Yeah. And there was some cuttings, you know, from when I was at Derby. And one of the headlines is him having a go because I passed the ball to our team, you know. And, and he did. He, we used to come in, we've won the game, I'd scored or made a goal, and he used to go mad at me. Wow. Why don't you keep hold of the ball? You're better on the ball than he is. And, you know, and I just used to say, I see, the, I play the game as I see it. If someone's in a better position than me, I'll give it them. I'm not going to keep it. But yeah, it was, I had a, I had a, a good first season at Derby. I think I scored 15 goals. Um, I had, I think I had 13 of them before Christmas. Yeah, wow. But then the base, the baseball ground, as you know, yeah. was the worst pitch in the world. <laughs> and it, that was worse than Burnham Park, you know. And I tell you what, we got to about December, January, 
and I, the, the mud was up to my ankles. Oh. And I just, I couldn't run on it. I, yeah. You know, I just couldn't, and I, and I didn't, I stopped scoring. And Arthur called me in and he just said, Jeff, you know, he said, you're not creating like you were. And I said, well, I know I'm not Gaffer. I said, but I'm struggling on that pitch. You know, I said, even the wings are heavy. <laughs> so he said, if you don't start performing, I'm going to bring someone in on loan to, to take your place. So anyway, I think the next game we played was away at Bournemouth. We drew nil-nil. He called after the game in the dressing, he said to me, you were brilliant today. And I thought I'd had a shocker. Yeah. He said, you were, you were brilliant today. You defended really well. And, and I'm thinking, defended well? I'm a winger. I'm a woman. <laughs> you know, but, but that was the side of the game. He wanted me to, to do better. Yeah. And I thought, why am I doing that? I've got a fullback. The fullback don't do my job going forward. And I yeah. used to argue with him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, Monday morning, we go into the baseball ground to get changed for training. And I walked in the room <laughs> and Mickey Thomas <laughs> was putting my training kit on. <laughs> And I've looked at him and I said, what are you doing? He said, well, the gaffer's told me to get changed here. So I've gone to see Arthur Cox, you know. I said, what's going on in there? And he said, oh, yeah, did, I told you, didn't I? I'd replace you if you didn't start performing. He said, you're in the other room for the reserves. <laughs> so I said, well, on Saturday, you said to me, I played really well and I defended. He said, yeah, but I had to say that, Jeff. He said, I hadn't done the deal for Mickey. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so Mickey came in and I think Mick, Mickey played about nine games. He yeah. left me out for nine games. And the team had still, they struggled to score and what have you, you know. And <clears throat> so he brought me back. We started scoring again. The pitches were a bit firmer. Yeah. I started, I scored a couple more goals, you know, like I say, ended up with 15. We got promotion. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a good first season. Good first yeah. season. Well, you mentioned the pitches. There was it so far yesterday in the, the game get called off? It just looked like there was a couple of soggy bits on the park. But years ago, you'd have, you'd have loved to play in a park like that, wouldn't you? I mean, you must have played in some cow fields. Yeah, and I believe, you know, I mean, I was looking on the on the, the Wanderers site yesterday and people were going mad saying, why on earth is this game being called yeah. off? You know, but apparently we, it was the referee who called it off and and and, and both managers agreed, I think. Yeah, yeah they, they agreed, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, some of the some of the pitches I've well, you, you see them in the, on the old football, didn't you? The yeah. big match revisited and that. Some of the we'll pitches you played on are shocking. I mean, <laughs> I'd love to I'd love to be playing today on some of these, yeah. especially as defenders can't kick you now. Yeah, I'd be delighted. <laughs> <laughs> well, like bowling greens, aren't they? Oh yeah, yeah, brilliant. The good pitch, the facility, the way the games change is great. Yeah. As far as how players look after themselves and the, the training, you know, facilities they have now and all the physics behind it all and all that sort of stuff is, I think, it's fantastic. I think the game's a bit boring, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I don't watch. I don't have Sky Sports because I did have it, but watching games is boring. Yeah, it's I they agree. pass sideways, they go yeah. backwards. You know, there's no, not many. There are some, but there's not many players like Jack Grealish where yeah. I'd watch him every day. Yeah, because that guy, when he gets the ball, what he wants to do is run forward, and he yeah. wants to make passes forward, and he wants to go past people. Even when he's getting kicked, he gets up and does it again. Yeah. That's what people want to see. Yeah, you know, they they don't want. It's all right having possession for seventy five percent of the game, but it's most of the passing's backwards. You know, if you're a good passer of the ball, you, you'll play till you're 90. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. There's a lot of games, especially the, the, the big games in the Premier League these days. That I think there's a record number of 0 0s and all that. And I mean, it's, they just cancel each other out. And it's, it's, it's not a good spectacle anymore. I mean, it's, it's, it's not the best. Um, you yeah. go back you go back to Bolton then they, they were, were they in the fourth division at that point uh, when, you re, when you rejoined yeah. them, Jeff. Uh, what, what, was it, what was the thinking behind uh, returning there? Well, I, I hadn't, I mean, my, my contract at Derby was up. Yeah. Um, I'd had a chat with Arthur Cox. Uh, we just got promoted to the first division. Yeah. And, you know, along the way, uh, in that second season at Derby, I'd fell out with Arthur because um, it's, it's a, something going along here, isn't there? There's a thing here <laughs> of me falling out. <laughs> but Arthur had called me in and said, look, you know, <clears throat> Away from home, Jeff, I'm not going to play you. I'm going to play a more defensive left-sided midfield player. And at home, you'll play. Yeah. So I'm sat there thinking I'm not happy with this. So I says, 
I said, well, if you're not going to play me uh, away, I'm not playing at home. <laughs> that was the last time I pulled the shirt on. <laughs> I didn't play again. Um, we, we got talking after a couple of months because he wouldn't speak to me after that. You know, he couldn't deal with someone saying he wouldn't play. Yeah. And I didn't mean I wouldn't play. I was just upset that, you know, you wanted me to play at home, but I'm not good enough away. And in yeah. fairness, he probably right. He needed a bit more defensive qualities away from home. But um, got to the end of the season and and they, you know, we got promotion. I, don't, I think I'd only played about nine games in that, that second division team. And that was at the start of the season. And he was changing players. Nigel Callan had come in from Watford. Yeah who was playing where I played and doing really well. So there weren't going to be a lot of space for me there. So Arthur said, you know, if you want to move and anyone comes in, you can go. Yeah. So Bolt, Bolton came in. I didn't really want to drop down to the fourth division, but with it being Bolton and I'd had such a good time there previously, I decided to go, you know, Alf Davis um, had contacted me to see if I was interested and I said yes, and and I, I came, you know, I came back, which it was great because it was like I'd never been away. There was still a lot of the people, all the office staff were still there, and you know, it was familiarity really, um, yeah. and just remembering I'd had a good time there, you know. Yeah, well, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and we went back to Bolton. Was I know you suffered a, a bad injury when you went back there, didn't you, Jeff? And it sort of uh, curtailed your career a, a wee bit, didn't it? Yeah, I. Uh, when I came back, I think I played in the first four four games um, and I'd scored, I think I'd scored two or three in the first four games. Yeah. But then we, we were playing Wigan in the second leg of uh, the League Cup, I think it was at Burnden. And the ball went over my head. I couldn't get it, but I reacted. I jumped for it anyway. And as I came down, I went over on my knee and my knee ligament snapped. Wow. So... Uh, that was my cruciate ligament. That was back in 1987. And most play, you know, it finished you mo most of the time because it was such a bad injury. Um, I was out for, I think, nine months. I missed with that, uh, which was a shame, really, because after having the injury and getting back, I wasn't the same player at all. I, I, you know, I was nothing like I was. I could get by at that level and play, but I wasn't. I wasn't any, you know, I didn't have the twisting and turning that I could do before because of me knee, you know, and it was a shame really because I was only 27, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I played a few more games in my career. I only played, I think I played about maybe another 50 games, but I had to retire. I retired when I was 30. Yeah. But how tough is that? I mean, out for nine months uh, as, a, as a player, but when you're not able to do what, what you love doing, it must be one of the. Toughest things it, is, be, it, it, well. it is tough. It is tough because the, the way back is really difficult. The yeah. rehabilitation is, how can I put it? A lot. It's hard graft yeah. without any end product because you ain't got a game at the end of the week. It's, yeah. it's literally weight training and running and all that. And in fairness, I, you know, I don't think I was the most dedicated um, <clears throat> player <laughs> at that time. Um, probably didn't train as hard as I should have to get back. Although, you know, once I got back into training with a ball, because, you know, all the training was literally without a ball. You didn't see a ball. It was running. It was weight training. It was building the leg back up, which has to be done. Yeah. I eventually got back into training with the lads with the balls. And in training, I was getting by looking good because you're playing within yourself, you know, uh, it was only, and I used to be again knocking on Phil Neal's door saying I should be back playing, I should be back playing. He said, No, you're not ready, you're not ready. Yeah. And I played in the reserves and I played all right in the reserves and I'd go and knock again and say, Why are you not picking me? And we ended up, well, he didn't, we fell out basically again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, I did eventually, I did eventually get back. And and the following season was when we went to Wembley. Yeah. I played, I think, I hadn't played a lot at the start of the season and I got in the team um, away at Crew. In I think it might have been the third round or fourth round of that Freight Rover Cup. And we went on a run. I came on a sub 
played really well. And we went on a run of 33 games without getting beat. And I played in all of them. And then uh, we, we got to Wembley, as you know. And that was touch and go with Phil. We weren't getting on really well, you know. And uh, I got injured right near the end of the season. And we'd already got to Wembley. And I played in all the games, the unbeaten run, and got injured. And uh, I was out for about two or three weeks. The season had finished. But there was one reserve game left before we went down to Wembley for the final. And uh, Phil said to me, you know, how's your leg and uh, my thigh? I said, yeah, I, I, I think I need to play in the reserve game. You know, I think I'm, I'm OK. And he said, well, if you don't play in the reserve game, Jeff, in fairness, I can't play you at Wembley because you've missed two or three weeks training. So uh, I said, no, I'm all right. Anyway, I played in it. I played OK. The thigh was OK. But then, obviously, Stuart Storer had played the last couple of games of the season when I was out and played well, in fairness. So we go down to Wembley and I'm, I think I'm saying, to, I, I used to room with Stevie Thompson, you know, and I'm saying to Tomo, he ain't going to pick me for the game at Wembley. He hates me. You know, it, we've had a few fallouts, Tomo. He don't like me at all. And I, he's, this is his perfect opportunity to leave me out. And it, but in fairness to Phil, the Friday night before the, or the Saturday night, I think it was a Sunday game. In fact, the night before the game, he called a meeting at eight, eight o'clock at night to name the team. And he named me in the team. I was I was amazed. Yeah. And in fairness to him, I you know I have to hold my hand up. I don't know if I'd have done the same if it me picking him. Yeah. And I have to admire the guy for putting aside the, our differences as personal. Yeah. But I think he also knew that I could play football. You know. I, yeah. And at Wembley, big, you know, the pitch and all that passing, and I, I'd be all right. Uh -huh. So he played me, fortunately, and I, I have to thank him for that, you know. And I, I've seen him, I've seen him at a Bolton game since then. Uh, we nodded to each other and said hello, you know. We, I don't think we're ever going to be best friends, but I have to say, you know, the falling out was a bit part on both of our parts. But probably in the main, down to me, not not understanding where I was at a time with an injury and stuff like that. I'm just wanting to play, you know, yeah. um, said too much again. <laughs> <laughs> you're, almost, you're almost, you almost played in that, uh, the wrong era a bit, Jeff, because it's, it's more so player power now, isn't it? But back then it, it, it was the manager's uh, word and that was final, wasn't it? Well, and it's funny, you know, I was listening to um, Mike Whitlow last night on the VWFC one, you know, talking and, he, and I was listening to Mike and he's right. When we played, it was a completely different time to now, yeah. you know, it's, it's like chalk and cheese because yeah. I've had managers, as you know, Bob Stoko called me in his office once, got me around the neck and stuck me up on the wall, <laughs> you know, because I'd said something he didn't like. You wouldn't hear of that these days. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, you don't hear of stuff like that and, man, yeah. you know, grabbing older you and you know, wanting yeah. to fight you and things like that. And these days, the players, whether they've got a contract or not, you know, long contract, if they want to move, they're moving. Yeah. If they leave them out of the team and they're on 100 grand a week, the chairman's going potty because they're paying 100 grand a week to somebody who's not playing. So they'll move. Yeah. And they've got agents who manufacture moves. You know, I mean, I don't knock the players for the money they earn because all the money's going in through Sky and all stuff like that. You know, in America, the American footballers, golfers, all that earn lots of money. If you're at the top of your sport, you're entitled to earn the money. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a com it's a completely different time. You know, the, yeah. the, the way we were treated as players sometimes, and I think when I did fall out with Phil on one occasion. Um, I lived in I, <laughs> another occasion. I lived <laughs> I lived in Black I lived in Blackpool. Me and Tomo lived in Blackpool. We used to travel over together. And when I fell out with Phil and I wasn't in the team, every Saturday he'd have me coming over to Bolton. Whether the you know if the team was away, he'd still have me coming over to Bolton on a Saturday morning to run round the pitch at <laughs> <No> Burnley, <way. laughs> to just lap the pitch for an hour. And then go home. So, you know, and I mean, 
that's how it was then. You know, they, yeah. they could they could do. I, I've been fine. I, when I was a kid, I was fine that many times off manager. They just take two weeks' wages. You're fine, yeah. and you couldn't do anything about it. You didn't you'd know where to go with it. Yeah. But yeah, it was still a good time as well, though. You know, seeing some funny, funny characters and funny things go on in dressing rooms. I tell you, it's brilliant. I bet, I bet you have. Yeah, they're talking about that that uh, the, the Wembley experience, the Sherpa Van Trophy final. I mean, um, scoring at Wembley must be a, a boyhood dream as well, Jeff. What, what was what was that like? Talk us through that. Well, there's a lot of people who said that that wasn't going on target, much, <laughs> and it got deflected. But I'm I'm not having it. <laughs> It, it was quite a, yeah, I think it was quite a bad deflection, but it went in and, and I ran and jumped over the barrier. So I'm claiming it just for the celebration. That was my goal. There's pictures of it being my, I've got a picture with my hands up. That's my goal. So, and then some records say it is my goal, <laughs> but now play it. I mean, as a kid, like you say, as a kid growing up, you, the only live game you ever saw was the FA cup final yeah. at the end of the season. Um, and everyone wanted to play at Wembley, you know, and I did it. I just wish I could have played there when I was at my best yeah. um, and not sort of playing within an ability that was less than I had, really. Yeah. Um, I still enjoyed it and loved it, you know, and played with some good players. You know, Phil Brown behind me, great lad, a good fallback, you know, and... and a lot of good players in that team. Stevie Thompson had good careers, but Wem Wembley was fantastic, you know. And uh, I, like I said before, if it weren't for Phil Neal swallowing our differences uh, and 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 you know not picking me, I wouldn't have played. But he did. He picked me, and I have to I have to acknowledge that the guy did something I might not have done. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the old Wembley as well. It's it had that sort of magicalness about it, didn't it? You don't really oh, get that with, with, the, with the new place. I mean, the, the whole thing where you walk from the, the side of the pitch and all that, is it, you just sort of miss that now, don't you? I think it, I think the reason for that, I think a lot of it is dependent on, on when you grew up and what, what football you watched. You know, I'm from the era where the home internationals were at the end of every season, you know, and they were great to watch England v Scotland, you know, yeah. and then go up to Amden the year after in Ireland and all that. Yeah. And Wembley was a special place. Nothing ever happened at Wembley apart from England internationals. You know, now the FA Cup semi-finals are there, uh, friendlies are there, and you know, you know, stuff like that. And yeah. them it's days, it was, enough. it was a sacred place that yeah. only a few ever got to play at. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what made it special. And it was the only live game on telly. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and you got to, you know, I mean, we got to walk up the steps to get the cup and that. You know, how many people can say that? It's a fantastic exactly. place. Exactly. But I guess there was a bit of a party after that after that night. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I always perform well at the parties. It's funny. <laughs> 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 yeah, we uh, we had a good do back at we were staying in a hotel in Beaconsfield, yeah. just outside London. Yeah, we had a we had a we had a good party that night and celebrated. And then went the next day we travelled back up to Bolton to the civic reception. Yeah, uh, with a few sore heads, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, it was special time. A special time. Absolutely. Then um, you'd leave, of course, and and, and go down for a brief stint at, at Cardiff City. Um, what was your, what was your time down there like? I know it was it was sort of cut short a little bit. Yeah, that that was difficult as well. Um, because the season after we, we, we played at Wembley, um, as I say, my relationship with Phil wasn't brilliant. Yeah. My contract was up. I was playing in the reserves. And uh, <clears throat> like I say, I wasn't the same player, but Cardiff came to watch me play at Port Vale in the reserves. And for some reason on that night, I played really well. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, it just that so happened that it was one of them games where I actually went past a, you know, the fullback a couple of times got crosses in and out, which I hadn't really been doing a lot. Yeah. And uh, Cardiff offered, I think, 15 grand for me the next day. I didn't really want to go to Cardiff because it's, you know, right down the other end of the country, you know, but there weren't a lot of options. Again, I didn't want to play in the reserves. Um, I didn't see much hope uh, of getting back in the team, to be fair, because Stuart Stora was playing. Bobby Savage was playing on the left and Phil, Phil, you know, Phil loved Bobby, great character, you know, good lad to have in your team. 
Um, so I didn't see much way back there, really. So I went down to Cardiff. Uh, play, I, only, I think I only played about 23 or 24 games there. But I did the knee that I'd had the bad injury on. I, uh, I did the cartilage on that. Uh, went to see the specialist after I'd had the cartilage operation. And he, he sort of said, well, really, you're going to struggle because I couldn't even run on it. He said, you, you, you're going to struggle not you can't really do anything on it for 14 months or so 15 months i only had i think about eight months left on my contract so i sort i went to see the manager len ashurst and just said look you know it's no good me hanging about here my wife's up in blackpool yeah so uh i need to call it a day i think really and i retired that that christmas night i think it was 1990 yeah i uh called it a day yeah how, how, how hard was that, Jeff? I mean, um, g- giving up the game like that uh, at, a young, at a relatively young age as well, it, it must, have been, must have been hard. Well, at the time, because be, I think, I'd, I don't know if I'd fallen out of love with the game or the circumstance around keep being injured. Yeah. Because I'd had a lot of injuries. Since doing my knee, I, I, I had a lot of other injuries, which yeah. came as part of that, because once you injure a part of your body, on one side, you, you tend to put a lot of strain yeah. on other areas. And I kept getting th- pulled muscles, thigh muscles, hamstring, calves. And at Cardiff, I was I was living away from home. I wasn't playing, I was injured. Yeah. I had to be down there, you know, Monday to Friday. Um, and I'd had enough really. And, yeah. and retiring came as a bit of a relief because I knew I couldn't play. But the frightening thing was, what you're going to do next? Yeah. That's that's the frightening thing. Yeah. I'd love to, you know, looking back, I'd love to have had a longer career, you know, and 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 made more of it probably. Um, but that's life. And 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 after leaving football, you know, 1990, long time ago, I've yeah. I've done well really for someone who. Left school, I left school with no qualifications, you know, because I knew I, was, I had an apprenticeship at Blackpool. Yeah. I only wanted to play football. Um, I've done really well in, in the, the time out of football. I qualified as a counsellor. Yeah. You know, I did a, a degree in that, in that and, and I've, done, I've done okay. And I've just retired from work in September. Yeah, wow. But they've called me back three days a week, <laughs> so I'm doing a little bit for them. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, you know. It was it was a sad it was a hard time because the first two years out of the game I didn't know what I was going to do. It was really difficult, you know, really difficult. Did you think about the going the, the coaching side of things? I didn't, and um, I think it was after I'd been out of the game maybe two years. I started doing a bit of training with a local team here called uh, Ren Rovers. Um, a couple of mates of mine who pl- I played with at Blackpool were managing there and I just went training, you know, and I found I could start running a bit then. And so I ended up playing for them in, in the Northwest counties at yeah. centre half. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't tackle anybody, <laughs> but yeah, I, I ended up playing for them and I was really enjoying it. You know, yeah. no money involved, just go out with a group of lads, you know, and there was a few ex-pros about, you know, and stuff like that. So yeah. we had a decent team. But Brian Flynn f- phoned me when he was at Wrexham. And he said, how do you fancy coming and working for me, doing a bit of, you know, scouting and stuff like that? And I said, no, I'm, I'm just got back playing, Brian. I'm really enjoying it. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got love back for it and, and yeah. there's no pressure. I go and play and it's really good. And really, I maybe should have took him up on it, you know, because whatever you say, you don't play football and not love it. Yeah. I think I just, I just had enough of what, what, what was happening at the end, really. Um, but you know, that's life, and I, I've had it. I can't moan at what life I've had. I had sixteen years playing football that not many people get. Yeah. I've been very fortunate since that I've managed to get good. You know, I've had good jobs and I've done okay. Uh, whereas a lot of people coming out of football don't, you know, it's a hard, it's a hard, hard existence. If you're not used to doing anything else, very difficult. Yeah. So I have been lucky. I, I do still have friends in the game, you know, that I talk to when you bump into them now and again, you know, and it, it's like, you've never been away, you know, when, yeah. when you see people, you know, big Sam and that, 
nothing changes. It, it's yeah. like you were with them yesterday. And that's the great thing about football. Mm. Your John Thomas is who I spoke to recently, you know, Gary Enshaws and people like that, Felgate, you know, good lads. And, and you have that affinity with them because you've done the same thing and been with them and been through things with them, you know, yeah. um, and you never lose that. Yeah. Never lose. It's like being at school. <laughs> yeah. no, you're right, you're, you're bang on. Um, I was going to ask as well, I mean, um, Bolton this season, and of course in the, what, what would have been the, the old fourth division, they've sort of, sort of had a bit of an inconsistent season. What, what have you made of this season? Do you think they can turn it around? Well, I think, again, it's, it's been a massive, massive time for them transition-wise from yeah. nearly going out of business. And, you know, I, I read the comments from fans, you know, on... on uh, the, the fans' websites and stuff yeah. like that. And yeah, you know, their fans, they have a right to say what they think. Personally, I think the manager has had to had a tough time bringing players in, that's for sure. Yeah. And the quality maybe that he wanted to bring in, he couldn't. He had to do it very quickly. Yeah. I think, to be fair to him, we've got to give him some time. I think this season is going to be a consolidation and build on the few, you know, they had a good run of results not long ago and then it dipped a little bit again. They're the inconsistencies you're going to get with the type of players he might have at the moment. Who knows what the future is going to bring, but I think you've got to be fair to people at the football club and give them the opportunity. Now, if we accept, say, which we're not accepting less than we want, what we're saying is we're being realistic. Yeah. And let's see what this season brings and where you can go from here. Because it doesn't look like, they, unless they have a great run, they're not going to be in the promotion yeah. places. Unless they have a great, which is possible, three points a time, you, you can do it with a, a good run. They're not going to, hopefully not going to go down at the moment because they've had games postponed. Yeah, they're, they're only a couple of points, two or three points outside the relegation. So that's more where your worry is. I think this season is let's let's just get where we are now, stay where we are, let the manager build what he wants to build. And if it's going to work, the start of next season to tell that, you've got to give the guy at least till November, December next year to see some sort of consistency come, yeah. you know, as a football club, because it, it was topsy turvy and all sorts going on. And I feel so I feel sorry for the crowds, you know, the, the fans, because there's nothing worse than your team going through a period like we are, you know, um, and it's frustrating for them because they had some great times, you know, in, in the, the early 2000s and mid, you know, yeah, and that's what you get used to. Yeah. yeah. But the stadium's good. It's got a great stadium. And we hope that Ian Everett can build something. You know, he, he done well at Barrow. Bolton's not Barrow. And that's where the fans, a lot of the time when you read comments, like yesterday, I read one saying, you know, how can you put Bolton Wanderers in the same versus Salford? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, the realistic side of it is your teams like Salford are in the same division. Yeah, that's what As they are. Fleet would have come from, you know, Northwest County, Fleet would have come there and they're in yeah. the division above. Yeah. You know, they're in, so you've got to take on board the realism of where we are. Yeah. We're not in the, in the Premier League and we want them to win and we want them to win well, but a bit of time for the, everything to gel, you know, needs to be given, I think. And, and I'm not being defeated, I'm being realistic. Yeah, yeah, I think you're absolutely bang on there, Jeff. Um, finally, finish up, I was going to ask, we obviously talked about your, your goal at Wembley. Is there any goal that stands out in your memories that um, is, 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 is more special than any others? Well, at Bolton or, or anywhere? Just anywhere in your, your whole career. Well, I think... Um, the ones that stand out I, I scored one at, at Hull City for Bolton yeah where I beat about five players in the box and bent it in the corner wow it's a shame there was no cameras about actually I've yeah. got it because I, I scored some great goals yeah at Derby I scored one at Gillingham away see two away games there and Arthur didn't like me away from home <laughs> for, for, for Derby I scored one at Gillingham where I ran from the, our penalty area to there is round the keeper and oh. put it in. And uh, at Leeds, playing at Tottenham, I, I chipped the keeper from outside the area. Wow. 
they're three that I always think about that, you know, sort of how I used to play, you yeah. know, and, uh, but I'm, there's loads. I, I enjoyed every goal. You know, I've scored some headers, believe it or not, which are great <laughs> headers. And uh, every goal gives you the same buzz. Yeah. You know, score. There's nothing like scoring a goal. Yeah. And I've looked back over recently. You know, over old videos and stuff and footage that you can get on YouTube. And you know, just when when you look back at the goals you scored, some of them, and and you see how the crowd react. There's nothing like that. You don't get that from anything you do. I mean, I. You know, I talk about work that I've done since I stopped playing football. I've never had a buzz like football. No. I'm proud of what I've done because I had no qualifications to start with and I have now. But the the, the buzz of football, there's nothing like it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, it's been absolutely brilliant having you on, Jeff. It's been an absolute pleasure. So thanks very much for, for coming on the podcast. No problem, Derek. It's a pleasure. <laughs>